We're kicking off our second season today with our combine, the first of two combines today at the DM facility. We have about 120 people here trying out for the MPL to try to make the draft this season. Plenty of opportunity here at the combines, plenty of opportunity for people to enter in the, into the draft. We'll have a total of 12 teams with 14 players on each, so that's 168 people. It's kind of a pinch me moment. It's, it's a dream come true, and we're all doing this for the right reasons, and we want this uh, product of NPL to be here long after we're gone. So I really believe we've set the, the standard, and boy, don't these players seem super excited and passionate, and they want to meet the owners. I met a lot of the owners, and I'd say I, I can go on any team that wants me. <laughs> Um, I think with the success of the league in the very first year, it's really bringing out some talent that now know that the league is here to stay. I came from racquetball. Uh, nobody's playing racquetball anymore, so I called some old racquetball buddies that are playing and said, where do you guys play? And then, uh, you know, then you get addicted like everyone else. And then I play this seven days a week now, so. I mean, we have players in our combine that were top 100 in the world in tennis. We have some crazy athletes um, that are joining us this year. I mean, a lot of people just didn't know about us. And so I think we got a lot of great press last year and we're excited to have more people throw their, their hat in the ring and, and be able to get out here and compete. And so I do think the level is gonna be really exciting this year. We're, and we're taking it to a new level. We're gonna have a whole dashboard that all the owners can, can get online in, in real time and see how their players are doing and you can say, hey, you had a great Saturday, I want to put you in a different position on Sunday. You can look at win percentage, you can look at all that data right there on your own laptop. So that's something we didn't have last year that we'll have in 2024. Oh, that's, that's music to my ears, that's awesome. Yeah. Okay, so stay tuned, this is just the beginning of some really exciting pickleball over the next several months. Pickleball does require you to be hydrated too to play long matches obviously we're at the combine today and there's uh, many games being played uh, hydration is very important not just for athletics but in general our water is infused with 92 trace minerals which provides not only hydration but uh, also assists with functions in the body anyway cognitive function brain function eyesight digestion so it plays a vital role in a lot of functions but mainly for events like this hydration for the athletes I'd just like to thank NPL for having this. It's been a great um, great chance to be able to play high-level players and to come down to Florida to be able to do it. Michael, Rick, Beth doing a great job with this, and I hope it continues to go because it's uh, certainly been a big impact on our lives, and uh, we just love it. Thank you all. Uh, I'm playing this year in the NPL, which is exciting and, and so thrilled about that to be here for season number two with twice as many teams, twice as many excitement, twice as much everything, we're ready to go. So I'm here helping out behind the scenes, whatever they need. I love meeting the new players, seeing the people from last year, meeting the new owners and telling them that if I'm pick number 160, to at least don't make me pick number 161. So I'm just doing whatever I can to get in, but no, no, I'm having a good time here. It's fun to be around this league, obviously. So Mr. Irrelevant, lit it up in the, in the NFL this year, went to the Super Bowl, yeah. We have any underdogs that you're watching today that can, um, through the course of the season, improve and then play really well and be valuable to their team from a late draft position? Oh, oh, big time. There's no question about it. When you look at the level of the competition and this cream rising to the top, it's just getting better and better. I mean, last year was great. This year, there we've got some, like, ridiculous titanic men coming in here. I'm already... I don't want them to take my place as hardest server, but they might. I'm serious. I've seen some of them hit. I'm like, no. Uh, ho hopefully none of them are higher than 6'5", because I kind of want to be one of the tallest along with Hedberg and the other Twin Towers. And of course, Witzkin and Milner are all kind of up there in the clouds. So whatever it takes, you know, but some of the ladies that I'm watching, especially as well, I've got some two secrets that are from my area. Shout out to Chattanooga, Tennessee. Those two ladies did really well in their morning combines, I mean, in their pods. I've been working with them. We've been playing some over the last month. I, they could be some dark horses or fillies, I guess they would call it. <laughs> anyway, the point is that, um, yeah, I think you're going to see a lot of people coming out this year that people are like, I have no idea who that is. And as they improve throughout the season, getting more matches under their belt pro, you'll see them coming down the stretch going, oh my goodness, they play big. I think we're going to see a lot of that this year. 
So the people that you saw from last year who are coming back, marked improvements in their play? Oh, absolutely. Marked, marked improvements in their play. They've been training since October, since the championship of last year. And I've been training because i got to keep up with these people. So I've been playing and I'm seeing the improvements and I have to uh, work hard for the next few months so I can keep up with all these uh, people coming back. Not only them, but I've been playing with some new people. These new people are really talented as well. So it's going to be very interesting in the next couple of days on how well they do because there's a lot of talent this year. I would say much more talent than even what we saw last year. It will be a challenge, frankly, for some of our players who were on teams last year to make teams this year. So we recognize that. So that's why we want to continue to grow, continue to increase the level of play. But I, I think as good as it was last year, the level of play is going to be through the roof this year with the players that are, that are showing up. It is high level, high level competitive play. It's what I've been looking for. And is this something that you could see yourself doing on a uh, monthly basis, traveling all over the country playing pickleball? Absolutely, especially with this group of people. Everyone is over the top. And if you're going to get drafted and be on a team, what are you looking for most about traveling through the country playing pickleball with all these people? I would say it would be meeting and connecting with people um, on the court and off the court. Uh, just bring out the best, bring out the best in everyone. Uh, the better someone else is, the better I can be and uh, just uh, working together, collaborating, and helping each other become the best we can be. We have a fellow here who was drafted last year by the OKC Punishers, Correct. who's since upped his, upped his game. Uh, Mark, tell everybody what it's like to be in the NPL and what your personal story was. Well, last year I did have a wonderful experience with Carol Riles with the OKC Punishers. Um, <clears throat> first, it was a phenomenal team. Just from the top down, from Carol to Jaime Onsens to Beth Bellamy, and just um, just really fit well with with Carol and and the and the and how we built a culture. Uh, Carol last year asked me to be uh, after being drafted asked me to be the GM because I came up with some ideas she liked. So um, so the yeah, and then this year I'm a part of the ownership team, so I'll be. GM again, I'll be player again, but now part owner of the OKC Punishers this year. So. What challenges as a GM are you facing that you're not adding to your team, you have to rebuild from scratch? Yeah, so <clears throat> the, I guess it's not too much of a challenge because all, every team has to do it, right? So there's uh, but the, the advantages of playing last year is I know the, the players from last year. So, um, and yes, I would, there's, there's people I want back on my team, but there's a 8% chance I can get them back with 11 other teams to be buying for them. So, um, but the, I think the challenge this year is look around at the talent and trying to figure out how we're going to, this massive amount of talent, and this is just one of the two weekends, how we're going to be able to decipher through all this talent and really fit to the culture of your team. So that's what's important for Carol and I is to find team players, uh, men and women of character, and, and then obviously talent as well. Tell everybody what it's like to be an owner here at the NPL and to be scouting everybody at the Combine. It's exciting and a little bit nerve-wracking. There's some really high-level players. I've been primarily watching the women and they have been incredible to watch. I've really enjoyed it and I think I'm gonna have to up my game a little bit more uh, to compete with them. Are you a player as well? I'm going to try. <laughs> All right, so um, have you ever played against any of the women that you've been watching today? I have not, and what I love about it is the fact that I don't know any of these women, and they're all new, and it shows the depth with which the competition is, and there were some amazing players today. Outstanding. In addition to how they perform on the court, what else are you looking for from the women? We want to look for good sportsmanship, someone that's having fun on the court. It's pickleball, right? So let's have fun out there. It's a game. Uh, what it means to be a teammate for each individual. Everyone does it with a little different style, but trying to figure out, okay, can you compete at a high level, but also bring your teammates along with you. And so that's, uh, that's a huge piece of the puzzle. Talk about uh, the excitement and how you decided to come into the MPL. 
super excited. Kansas City, you know, no, of course we have the Chiefs, so it's sports, sports city, very, very uh, supportive sports city. I actually got into it starting wanting to play the combine initially. I just wanted to play the combine and then of course owning a club just started asking a few more questions about how do you get a team and how and it just and Rick and Michael were so great and they kind of walked me through it and said okay well we may have a team available and then would you be interested and and I we just jumped at it super excited well talk about it. you're gonna play also in the league well, we'll see how this weekend goes. We'll Are you playing see. in the combine? Yeah, I'm going to play in the combine this weekend. You draft we'll see yourself. How it goes. If if I do well enough, if not, I won't waste the spot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, well, right. I know I know the feeling. So, right, right. but uh, talk about now. You, the excitement is too. You guys are going to have your own facilities there in Kansas City. Yes. They're building these all over the country, and we're also hoping in Boca, so yes. we can all start hosting our home matches, right? Right. right. So, one of the we're super excited. We've got a. We've got one facility now, we've got one under construction, so we're looking forward to having that home for so that we can host some matches, which would be great. We've gotten a great response from once the announcements were made that we had a team. The city's been wonderful. We've gotten some good some good press coverage, so we're getting that, that interest going and NPL starting. People are understanding a little more about NPL, so we're extremely excited. the number one pick last year with the Indy Drivers, your hometown, you couldn't ask for a better lottery. This year there's going to be 12 teams picking, so obviously you were just named the number one player in the country, so obviously you're probably going to be right there if not the number one pick, so it's going to be a, an interesting scenario. Do you have a preference right now of where you'd want to play in your dream, whoever had the number one pick? You know, the reality is the number of amazing players is off the charts. We did sign almost every high-level player in the top 30. And so um, I think if Beth Bellamy was healthy, I would take her first. She's been the most dominant woman, and she qualifies for the super senior. So to me, she'd be the no-brainer first pick. I don't know where I'm going. There's no way I would say if I have a preference on a team or not. But what I do know is that the six new owners are extremely passionate. And I know that any of the players that played last year do want to help assist new teams. So whether I go to a team like yours, and you guys certainly know this whole system, I'm happy to also help a new ownership group to really get their feet wet and understand this whole incredible karma that the NPL revolves around. of the world champion Indy Drivers, Phil Cohn. Phil, what's it like to be the champion of the National Pickleball League? It's exciting to be able to bring home a championship to this city of Indianapolis. Uh, it's been a while, I think the Colts were the last one. We got a world championship under our belt now, and no matter what happens moving forward, we can always uh, say, my wife and I, who are both co-owners, can say, we won one. And uh, we're looking forward to trying to repeat, but, um, as excited as we are about last year, we don't want to rest on our laurels. So we're out here scouting the talent, hoping to pick up some new, really new talent and uh, add something to our roster, something special. Well, Phil, it's a special challenge that you have this year to repeat because you're not going to have any players left. You have to start from zero again when you go into the draft. What kind of challenge does that present to you? It's a huge challenge. You know, because we brought on so many new teams, the league wanted to uh, start at an even keel for everybody. So going forward, we'll keep this team that we pick, um, but we were disappointed that we didn't get to repeat as uh, champions. We didn't get a chance to repeat, but you know, you play by the league rules no matter what, and uh, we're okay with it. Uh, the other owners all voted. I think it was the sole vote to say we hold on to some players, but I saw the wisdom in both ways. I said, guys, if that's what you want to do, let's move forward with that path. And I think it's going to be challenging for all of us, but equally challenging, and I think we'll do great. So with that challenge in front of you, you have 120 players out here. How mind-boggling is it to watch all these players play within a two-day period? Well, it's entertaining, but it's very difficult because you have to really look for and not just those great players that will add something to your roster, but you want the personalities, you want the... The, the people that will be low maintenance but still add a lot of talent. So there's a lot of challenge to it, Adam. And um, we went through it last year. We, we came through okay, uh, unscathed almost. 
and we're hoping this year to do a little better from having the experience of last year. You have six new ownership groups with six new teams. What kind of a, what's the biggest surprise that you learned the first year that you could share with them? Well, actually, the biggest surprise came the second year in finding out that the new owners are, are going to be, it seems, really is just cool, great to work with, like the first group. But if I could say to them anything that they could learn from the experiences, um, what we all did, the, uh, the what we call the OGs, the original owners, we enjoyed the ride. And I know for my wife and I, you know, we, we, all, we bought this team together, we grew this team together, we, we own this team together, we work this team together. I know for the two of us, it brought us even closer. And I'm hoping that uh, that's a microscopic look of, uh, of how it happens with all of the owners, where we all become uh, a close-knit group. You know, Vinny, talk about now how you went from playing last year and having a great time and deciding, you know what, I want to own a team. So, you know, it's all about experience, right? And meeting people and the community, right? The, the, it felt like a family, the whole thing. So I think that had a large part to do with it. Uh, I don't think I had so much fun playing in NPL or doing anything since high school. And I think that was said by a lot of other players also, right? So it was that experience, meeting great people, great owners. Uh, so the whole ecosystem, right? The founders. So uh, when we were coming to a conclusion of last year's season, at that point, uh, you know, I told Michael, I said, I'm going to get a couple of my friends and we will look at buying a team. Well, we have two combines, another one in Dallas, so excited about tomorrow, and then the draft in April, and then we start the season this year going to a lot of new locations, which is really exciting also. Bigger venues with 12 teams. Right, no, we needed a little bit bigger facility because of the additional players and, the, and you know, the higher number of teams this year. Um, it's going to be a little bit different, but I think we're going to throw great events, and, and the teams are a little bit smaller too, so um, but we will increase the number of players by about 50%, and I think we're just going to have a great time, and it, it'll be another new experience, but it'll be, it'll be terrific. Well, I have to talk about, first, congratulate you as the number one player of the year, and then, unfortunately, towards the end of the season, you, came, you got an injury, and you had to have some surgery. I know you're still on the rehab train, and uh, I know you're such a fighter. What's your own projection about playing this season? Well, I'm really hopeful that I'll be back for the season. I may not make it for the first event, but I think by summer I'll be back. And um, my surgery went really well. I've been working really hard in, in physical therapy. And even though, you know, I definitely miss being on the court with everyone, it's great to see everyone at events like this and um, get together with all my old buddies. And we even have a lot of, you know, former players that played in the league that came by and are visiting last night. And same thing at, at Dallas, we expect a lot of um, our, you know, former players to be there supporting us so it's such a great community like I was saying and that's made this a lot better even though I'm off the court I still feel like you know have everybody pulling for me and can't wait to get back on the court. Well, we can't wait to see you back out of the court also and uh, it's going to be interesting to see the draft that's going to be a lot of fun again with 12 teams this year so we're looking forward to that as owners and just the excitement of watching all these players the next couple days because I look at the list and I hardly know any of them. I said, where are all these people coming from? Oh, I know. Everybody's, I think, you know, the word's out. People know that it's fun. And I think so many people, like, miss that experience of being a part of a team. I mean, that's why we formed NPL. We're like, hey, this kind of looks fun. I want to be on a team, too. So if nobody else is going to do it, we're going to do it. And um, it is so much fun. There's nothing like, you know, playing and then getting off the court and cheering your team on to victory. Or even if they don't win, it's just fun as being part of it you know, the team, so we love that. Make sure you and Julie keep those parties going, the, the 80s parties, the theme parties. That really made this season the fun events because everybody partied afterwards. They were competing on the courts, but went to dinner and partied, you know, over the weekend. That made the big difference. So that's, keep keep that, that piece of it up because that's, I think, makes the difference of what MPL is all about. Right, it's, it's like that community that I was saying. And, um, you know, we all battle world-class pickleball during the day and then have a fun time together at night. There's a lot of people that have, we have a diverse group, but a lot of things in common too, in that we are so blessed to be able to be out here at this age, you know, battling and then having a great community time at night. So we love it. Boca Raton. You guys gave me the chance. You let me play with you. I can't, can't say enough about you guys, boss number one and boss number two. Actually, sorry, three and four. It's their ladies that are one and two. So boss three and boss four, Rick and Carl, thank you. You gave me the chance to have the best sports experience of my life. 
men's inch college tennis. I love you for it. And hey, don't forget me if I'm left over at the bottom of the pickle barrel at the last pick. I need to get on a team. Thanks. This year we have a similar slate in terms of our eventual schedule where after we have the combines we'll have a draft and once the players know which teams they're on, we'll start our season in May and go all the way through the championship in October. All 12 teams are here to check out these players in the hope that they get a secret weapon when they do the draft on April 9th.